Hey y'all. All right. As you can see, I've got myself a mess. And a pretty good one too. But also as you can see, I've got this eight and three quarter completely blown apart. But you know what? I've been making these videos on these rear, rear axle assemblies here lately. And I've been kind of concerned that if there's some certain information I'm not passing along to you all. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to basically pass that along to you all. What information I could anyway. So I thought there would be, this would be a good opportunity to make a video about that. So, all right, here's, here we go. We're going to talk a little bit uh, about the Mopar rear axle assemblies, and we're going to dive into them, and mostly I'm going to be talking about the eight and, the eight and three quarter. Okay, first of all, the name, eight and three quarter. What does it mean? What are you talking about? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. It's in reference to that, the ring gear, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so the ring gear is when you account for the total width, it is eight and three quarters inches across. Okay, so I'll let you see it here. Get the camera over here. As you can see, we're about eight and three quarter inches across. Okay, so that's where the name comes from. And when you stop and think about it, you might be like, wait a minute, what about the other rear axles you've been working on? Like the nine and a quarter and the eight and one quarter and all of those same thing same processes okay so here's an eight and a quarter right there and it has the same kind of we're talking about the same kind of thing with them okay so there's another eight and three quarter right there so the nine and a quarter is also the same way it is nine and a quarter inches across here to here okay so just something to remember now when people talk about the ford nine inch same thing it's nine inches across okay so let me get this up here and get this out of the way yeah i like that that works okay so now uh one other little bit of information i wanted to pass along when you are taking out your ba bearings and races and you're going to get new ones and change them out be sure to hold on to your old stuff to compare it to the new stuff because if you don't you could wind up with the wrong bearings and then you get you basically get yourself into a bad situation and then you have to go and try to figure out exactly what your old what your old bearings were and you went and thrown them away okay so just something to keep in mind all right now, I've been talking about the casting number, and right there it is, the 741, talking about the last three digits, okay? Now, that is the common slang, all right? That's what you're going to hear mostly, all right? So when people talk about, like, uh, cylinder head casting numbers or block casting numbers, they're going to say the last three or four digits, Okay, now in Mopar eight and three quarter, it's usually always talking about these last three digits. Now, the most common ones, the most common ones you're going to come across is seven four one. Okay, they made a lot of them. Okay, so that's why that is. They made a hell of a lot of these, and they're relatively inexpensive. Okay, now. The thing about the, eight, the 741 carrier or casting is this uh, diameter here is 
smaller on the pinion shaft okay it's smaller the later 742 and 489 uh, carriers or casting numbers are this pinion shaft is different okay the splines become uh, finer and the shaft is larger in diameter so now I'm exaggerating I'm not saying it's that much larger but you get the point okay it's just bigger so there you are now another thing that may come up when you're uh, thinking about these uh, when you're thinking about ring and pinions if it's used the ring and pinions cannot be swapped out okay so or uh, interchanged that's a better word interchanged you can swap out used for used and you can swap out new you know used for new or you know new for used but the ring gear and the pinion gear must stay together okay now this is actually a 355 so this one is the 323 so 323 323 okay and if you have an inclination to know you want to know how to identify your ring gear if you look right there there you go 3.23 all right pinion shaft sometimes it'll be stamped on the end this one isn't but it is stamped right there on the shaft itself 323 so those two guys they came out of this housing okay and they uh they're a match set so see these teeth mate to each other okay they're worn in they're mated to each other they're worn together so you can't take a new pinion gear with it and put it with an old ring gear or vice versa uh, they have to be either new and new or old and old and they have to be matched together so i can't take this 355 this one here meant for the 355 and put it with this ring gear that's meant for the 323 because they are not mated to one another you know all right that's just the way it is when you're talking about used all right so now that out of the way exterior differences on the 741 and the 489 and 742 well i don't have a 742 however as far as exterior differences here on this this cover almost none as a matter of fact here's a 741 right here mm -hmm. and here is a 489 I do see some small differences this is different right there you see and then you see yeah okay um, I see this little pad here on the 489 that I don't see on this one on the 741 the um, let's see what else do I see anything else okay this pad is still here that's also on the for the 741 carrier so we've got a lot of little same stuff here back and forth and yeah, I'll show you right here oh I do see a little small difference here if you look here see this is all nice and straight that casting is and if you look here this one's nice and straight too but it has this little indentation all right so yeah just a little different and this is a 489 now what if you come across one of these and it's not one of these here it's not a 742 it's not a 741 or a 489 but it is at least let's say it's in a dodge truck or a or a, a a big Chrysler or something like that what do you do okay well there is you look for those casting numbers there are other casting numbers that you will find but 
like I said earlier, these are the most common ones. Okay, 741, 742, 489. Those are the ones you're going to run across the most often. Okay, so that out of the way. With that out of the way, we can now I can talk to you about uh, the cost. What should the cost be when you're buying one of these? Well, um, it can go anywhere. I've been pricing them as like totally rebuilt units here lately. You're looking at over a little over a thousand dollars for like the cheaper ones, and they can go up though accordingly depending on who's the rebuilder. The other thing is when we're talking about use, however, they can be all over the place. They literally can be all over the place. I've paid as little as 200, 250 bucks for one. I have seen them going for, I have seen used ones going for close to a thousand dollars, you know, and I mean, you know, that gets a little ridiculous there because then you're thinking, wait a minute, you know, a rebuilt one is like 1200 bucks, you know, you put a, you know, maybe another two or 300 bucks with that and you can have one with a warranty. So there you go. Um, just to keep that all in mind there to keep it. But, uh, you know, when you're doing, when you're shopping for one of these, there's some things that are going to make the cost go up. And some stuff's gonna make the cost come down. One is your uh, the gear ratio, and let me explain something about gear ratios, okay? Because uh, some folks get a little confused about all that, you know. But it's it's not hard to understand. Okay, the higher number numerically, okay, the higher the number. So, like a 411 gear is a lower gear. Backwards, isn't it? The lower numerically the gear is, the higher the gear is. Okay? So, there's also some slang terms to, to keep in mind about that as well. When you're talking about all of that, you... There can be slang terms like, um, get that adjusted there. Some of these slang terms can be like, you know, stuff like, you know, somebody has a, uh, 355 gear. Okay. And, uh, then somebody else has a, let's say a 276. Let me pause this for just a minute. I gotta go check on something. Okay, so like I said, so let's say somebody has a 276 gear, and then you got somebody else over here that's got a 355 gear. And the slang terms for some of those are like the 276 will be, which is a higher gear, even though it's lower numerically, they will call that an airplane gear, you know, or a highway gear, or an interstate gear. And uh, the reason for that is, is that, um, that higher gear is really great like out on the interstate you know and uh, you know so you'll be like cruising along 75 80 miles an hour and turning really low RPMs you know so there's that helps however on the drag strip or getting off the line somewhere that gear is not gonna be all that great that 276 isn't okay but you can take that same thinking and reverse that. So let's say the 410 I mentioned, or 411 I mentioned earlier, okay? If you have a 411, you have a 411 gear ratio, okay? Now, when you have a 411, you have a gear that's gonna take off from the line really, really good. It's gonna, that car's gonna snap and jump up off the line and go. Okay, so in drag racing, that's going to be fantastic. However, conversely, if you try to take that, car, that same car and drive it on the highway or drive it on the interstate, it's going to be, it's really going to be struggling. 
because you're going to be cruising along, trying to cruise along at 55 miles an hour, and that thing's going to be like at 3,000 RPMs or more, and it's just going to be just screaming almost. Okay, and if you have a gear ratio that's like 456 or 430 or 488 or uh, maybe even 513, uh, it's even going to be worse. Okay, so again, lower and lower and lower gears, even though numerically higher. You see where it's, you see how you get you can get mixed up there, you know. So, um, just something to keep in mind there—a little food for thought. But, how do you figure out your gear ratio if you can't find those numbers I just showed you, like on that 323? It's actually it's really simple. Let me show you. Flip this back around. Okay, here we go. Now, what you will need to do is you will need to count your gear teeth on your pinion gear and then count all of your gear teeth on your ring gear. Reason being, you can go, once you do that, you divide one into the other, okay? So the number of these teeth, you divide into the number on these teeth here, okay? And that gives you your gear ratio number, okay? So not a really complex mathematical equation or anything like that you just divide one into the other okay so just a little you know easy trick to get all that figured out but if you uh, have any more questions about any of this you know what to do you're smart drop a comment down below I'll do my very best to answer your questions and help you out best that I possibly can all right as for me I am I've got bearings to order yeah a lot of them so this um, is going in my truck so yeah it's going to it's going to be put into a housing that's going in my truck so I know uh, some of you you longtime viewers you be like you're like, wait a minute, you were going to do that like a year or two ago. And you're right, I was. But I came across an uh, eight and a quarter, 355 ratio. Uh, it was in one of my parts trucks, and it was perfect. But that is the one I just got done pulling out of my truck now because it's got a bad carrier bearing. So that's not going to be an option anymore. So, later today, I'm going to a friend's house, and he may have a rear axle assembly for me that I can use. So, if he does, maybe I can uh, use it, and it'll be good, you know. And I'll keep building this 8 and 3 quarter and get it ready to go in my truck. Some downsides, though, to using this 8 and 3 quarter, however, are that we're looking at... The eight and three quarter only has a five on four and a half inch bolt pattern. So I'm gonna to have to run adapters, which means it's gonna push my rear wheels out just a little bit. That may not be all that bad of a deal. A lot of people are running adapters these days and the adapter plates have came a huge long way from what they used to be. I remember back when I was a kid and getting adapter plates and they were cast aluminum, cast aluminum. Talk about scary. That was scary. But the thing nowadays is they're like machine billet aluminum. They're uh, and they're actually really good. They're really really nice. So just uh, you know, just got to keep your you know lug nuts torqued. Everything's got to stay torqued. You can't be you know you got to and you got to torque it with a torque wrench. So, but um, so just something to keep in mind there um, also I'm gonna have to weld perches on that housing that's gonna go into the truck it's a C body housing from a, like a big Chrysler or Plymouth or Dodge you know big car okay full-size car from like the early 70s so there you go um, if you want to know more about these 
eight and three quarter if I've piqued your interest and you want to know a little bit more about them I'll try to answer your questions like I said the best I possibly can but there are other resources one of which is all par okay you can uh, go to all par they have a bunch of information there you can access at any point or time okay all right Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate all of the subscriptions and everybody's comments and everything and all the thumbs ups and the likes and the shares and all of that stuff. I really, really seriously appreciate it. Really, really do. So thank you very much and God bless and have a great one.